Estimating the model in seminar. Now before going into detail on how to estimate the model in seminar, we are going to quickly review what have we done up till now. Along with that, we are going to look into some other critical topics as well. Following this session, we are going to focus on how to use the PLS estimate function in R. Now let's say this is the model that we want to test. Now we want to assess the path from vision development and rewards to collaborative culture. Now the code that we have developed up until now is that we first load the library and we write library and then we write the SAM in our package. Then we load the data and we load the data in this data object. Now you can give it any name you want, but make sure the names are meaningful. Now, how do you load the data? You have to call this read.csv function. And the arguments it takes is the file name, the header, in this case, yes, the head, there is a header with the variable names, and then the separator is comma. And look at this, the brackets open, the brackets close. Then you read the data, this object, so to make sure that the data has been identified and loaded properly. The next thing is we have to specify our measurement model. And now again, here is an object. Now look here. Again, the function was called and the data was stored in the object. Now here you are specifying your measurement model and that measurement model is stored in this object. And that object is named as simple MM for measurement model. In a model, we've got different constructs. Now, what is this composite then? Now, this is again your construct. Now, a model can have multiple constructs, obviously. So, we've got vision, development, rewards, collaborative culture. Now, these are the names of these constructs. Now, each construct is measured using multiple items. And again, those items are represented or coded as VIS 1, 2, 3, 4, DEV 1, 2, 3 up until 7. Similarly for rewards abbreviated as RW, collaborative culture abbreviated as CC. Now these are the initials that I have used in my data file. Now you can put any name here, but these are the initials and make sure they match your data file. So what is this composite here? Now before I go in and further detail, let's look at the basic definition of composite. Now look at this, PLS SCM on the other hand assumes the concepts of interest can be measured as composites, like your constructs can be measured as composites. Which is why PLS is considered as composite based SCM method. Model estimation in PLS SCM involves linearly combining the indicators of a measurement model to form composite variables. Now what you do is you combine your indicators and form composite variables. The composite variables are assumed to be comprehensive representation of constructs and therefore they are valid proxies of the conceptual variables being examined. So the composites that we are making here are the valid proxies of the constructs that we want to examine. This is a composite for vision, composite for development, composite for rewards and composite for collaborative culture. Now look at this, a bracket opens, another bracket opens and both of these brackets close. Now this closing bracket here is for this opening bracket. And this closing bracket here is for this opening bracket. So where is the closing bracket for this one? It's the last one here. Moving on, now that you have specified the measurement model, obviously in PLS SCM or any SCM based software, you have to relate the constructs with each other. In this case, our model was pretty simple. Vision, development and rewards were influencing collaborative culture. Now, how do you specify the structural model? Again, we need a structural model object. Now, here is your object. And what are the relationships that you want to test? Now, those relationships are specified as paths from your IV to your DV. Now, in future, we are going to look into mediation and moderation as well. Now, look at this. From now, what are the independent variables? Now, there are multiples, so I've just added them in a vector 
here or you can call it an array, array as well. C bracket opens all the variables obviously use the same names as you have given before. Two, this is one dependent variable. What if I had multiple dependent variables? Then I would have created another path by adding just a comma here and then another path here. Now moving on, once we have specified our measurement model and structural model, the next step is estimating the model as we do PLS algorithm in Smart PLS. So this is the step three in creating the model. After having specified the measurement and structural models, the next step in model estimation is using the PLS SCM algorithm. For this task, that is your estimation, the algorithm helps in determining the scores of the constructs. And these construct scores are later used as input for single and multiple regression models within the path model. Now, after the algorithm has been calculated, the construct scores the scores are used to estimate the regression models in the path model. Now, as a result, we obtain estimates for all the relationships in the measurement model, that is indicator weights and loadings and the structural model that is path coefficients. Now, this estimation is later used in your final model estimation, that is your structural model estimation, where you estimate your regression model within the path models. Now a construct may be reflective or formative. Now what do we mean by reflective construct and formative construct? In simple terms, this is reflective when the arrow flows from the construct to the indicators. And this is formative because the arrow is coming from the indicators to the construct. Now, in order to know more detail about what is the difference between reflective and formative, there is a video on the channel and I'm going to share the link. The setup of the measurement model depends on whether the construct is reflective or formative. Now by default, PLS SCM assumes that it is a reflective construct, whereby these items are interchangeable. Now when a reflective measurement model is assumed for a construct, the indicator loadings are typically estimated through mode A. Although when a construct is reflective, you do not need to mention mode A. But if the construct is formative, you will have to make sure that you mention that it is mode B for estimation. Now it estimates the relationship from the construct to each indicator based on a reflective measurement model that uses bivariate regression. Now this here is your dependent variable and this here, the construct score, this represents your independent variable because the arrow is flowing from the construct to the indicators. Now, as a result, we obtain correlation between the construct and its indicator, that is correlation weights, which become the loadings and which show how well these items are representing the underlying construct. Now, in contrast to reflective measurement, the formative measurement model is assumed for a construct. The indicator weights are typically estimated using multiple regression. Why multiple regression? Because these indicators are influencing this dependent variable here. More specifically, the measurement model estimation applies PLS SCM's mode B when your measurement model is formative. Now, if this is the model, you are going to use mode B. For now, we are just focusing on reflective models. We are not focusing on formative. When we use formative, I'm going to tell you how and when to use mode B. In which the constructs represents a dependent variable. Here is your dependent variable and its indicators are your independent variables. Now, these formative constructs are validated in a different way. They are specified in a different way as well. And we are going to look into this in greater detail later. Now, as a result, we obtain regression weights here. And the relationship from the indicators to the construct, which represent indicator weights. Now, the use of mode A, that is correlation weight, is for reflective measurement, whereas mode B is for your formative measurement. By default, it is always mode A. 
Now, if you want a measurement model to be formative, you are going to use mode B. Now, another important point is weighting scheme. Now, we have seen this weighting scheme in PLS. Where? Have a look here. Now, if you run this model, calculate PLS algorithm, that is estimating the PLS algorithm. Now, here is your weighting scheme and we are selecting path. It is the preferred weighting scheme. Now, you have to specify this in your SEM in R code as well. So, where do you do this? If we come back here, so you have to specify the weighting scheme, the effective weighting scheme and the path weighting scheme. While the results differ little across the alternative weighting schemes, path weighting scheme is the most popular and recommended approach. This weighting scheme provides the highest R square value for the endogenous latent variable and is generally applicable for all kinds of PLS path model specification and estimations. Following this session, we are going to focus on how to use the PLS estimate function in R.